Let's start this video in the dark so you can marvel at the new pattern he said whack it of the uh, new filter layer. I have redesigned this and this time this video actually has open SCAD files in the description down below so if you want to make one of these air filters you can make one of these air filters if you have a 3D printer. If you've not got a 3D printer you can still make something similar just using other materials. Well basically we've got wood, plastic, anything you have. Okay. Let's bring back the light. So this is the Mark II version. Well, it's the Mark III version, I suppose, really, of an improvised air filter that was originally born out of the idea of the HEPA-type air filters you can find on eBay that you look at them and you think, I don't think they are HEPA. They're basically drawing air through. I mean, they're very simple. A lot of them are literally just a USB power supply driving a very, very small fan. And then there's a bit of sponge and a bit of filter material. And the units cost about £16, but the filters cost about £20 and don't last very long. They say they should be replaced every six uh, months. To me, the filter would be blocked up by then. However, this is a completely different approach. The filter in this one is just simply tissue paper. It could be kitchen towel or it could be toilet paper, as in this case, because this was sized for a single sheet and it holds it on itself. I let go of this. It just it snaps straight onto the surface and gets uh, held down and draws the air through it. This ring is optional. It's just it's an optional file you can print if you wish to actually hold the stuff in place tighter, just weigh it down a bit. So the idea behind this is that while researching the filters, I discovered that paper filters are one of the best of air filters because unlike the woven fabrics that are crisscrossed, they have a fairly random layer of wood fibres and that results in very, uh, very good filtering down to like literally sub one micron. And that effect, that what, sub one micron is good for most dust and uh, mould spores and things like that. So I shall turn this off now because uh, it is, I shall just unplug it or plug it aside. Just in case it's making, well, it's not making too much noise. That is one of the reasons it uses a cheapo fan off eBay. You can get the sort of high powered noisy fans with very high throughput. But this one is a nice balance of low power and low noise. If you do get one of the higher power ones, you can obviously you can control the speed of it. So the first version of this had a fairly solid base, but I was a bit concerned it was actually blocking the edges here and disrupting the airflow. So the base this time is based on uh, four of these feet. Each of these feet can be 3D printed independently and you basically take a screwdriver, grab the screwdriver, you put a screw on the end of it with a washer and you pop up the inside of the foot and out the end and then you put a nut and washer on the other side in the fan like this. The bottom of the foot is designed to take a 10 millimeter rubber uh, bumper foot self-adhesive. There is that gap up the middle. It would be nice making it solid, but then you couldn't put the screw up the middle. It was a compromise, but it gives this effect. It lets you put the feet on like this and they do stick well. And that does reduce any sort of coupling of vibration with the fan onto the floor. I was wondering, I prefer the triangulation approach of just three feet, but having said that, this is pretty solid. The fan housing is so solid and the 3D printing is so accurate that it's, it seems quite solid. It doesn't rock. The next part of the 3D printing is the base. And the base is simply a cavity to buffer away from the fan. If you put it down, directly down onto the fan, it would potentially affect its ability to pull the air straight through by the swirling turbulence. It would actually limit the uh, sort of direction out of the air. I don't know how much of an issue that is, but I did allow for it. In that file, you'll be able to adjust the height of this to whatever you want. I put this about, I think it was 40 millimetres. Hold on. Measuring. Device is 40 millimetres. 40 millimetres right down to the bottom. When that's printed off, it will have the holes in place for a 120 millimetre computer fan. This connector, uh, there's no provision for it. I literally just drilled two three millimetre holes and then used a cone uh, drill to actually just widen this out and just stuck that in. You don't need to do this. The cable coming from the fan, you could use the existing connector and you could just hack together something, a 12 volt power supply lead. In this case, I'm using a generic 
cheapy eBay 12 volt power supply because it's not that critical electrical safety wise, apart from exposed metal, is one that came with some LED lighting. But for use around kids and stuff like that, obviously you'd want something safer and no high power fans because they can stick their fingers in the bottom. You could put a grid over there if you wanted though. The first of the top layers, this was the Mark II. It, this pattern might look quite complex. It might look like it's, you know, you have to define in the 3D printing lots of uh, reference to these because it's actually a loop. Uh, this is actually a very small piece of uh, script in the text. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to modify it. And this was designed to just sit on. And initially I thought it'd be quite nice to have a square one. And then I thought it looks a bit too square. And I decided I'll go with the round one. First of the pink one. Just because, well, pink is the colour of the channel. Uh, and then laterally, because it looks quite good, this is a, a marble filament that basically is grey filament with little black flecks in it. And it produces a good look. That's also what I printed the ring out of. The options you have with this are, you can choose the depth of the lip here, so you could bring it right down if you wanted. And also it has these anti-turbulence fins at the edge. I would have liked to continue them right across, but there was a limitation with all this, you know, all the holes. I wanted to have as many holes as possible, but still, even despite that, it's still not as good as the original, which had the square channel. You know, I could almost go back to that, couldn't I? But the square channel was kind of close to fit. It's not that bad. Maybe I'll go back to that. Maybe I'll add that as an option. But I thought the round pattern was quite nice and doesn't seem to really affect the airflow too much. Although there is a lower area there. I think it creates a slightly higher vacuum, so there's going to be stronger air pull through the actual the filter paper. Um, so what the options you've got there are basically just the depth of this and those fins will extend down at the same time. The idea is, theoretically, that they break up the turbulence of the air and they just result in a, a more directional flow. That is something I found out the hard way in the past when I was making circuit boards for silk flames. And the silk, the fan blows the silk and makes it flap while LEDs light it. But I found that without something to break that turbulence, it twisted the silk so the air does come out in a spiral effectively. That will probably help with that. And the construction of this to put this on is just more nuts and bolts. You just improvise. I use three millimeter and that's it. It's like you print four feet, you print the, uh, you print the base here and then you print the top of your choice in whatever color plastics you want. And optionally is the ring which can go on top. And it's just sized. You can change the size. You can change the outer size and inner size of this ring. It's just, it's an open-ended sort of SCAD script. But it's just sized to basically give a good margin around the holes here. So that when you place it on, you can actually just basically um, just line it up with your hands. Although now I'm thinking it would have been interesting to actually put a small hole through here and put a couple of pins on here so that it aligned up, so that it dropped into a nice lockable position. But it doesn't really matter. But it's working out quite well. And as I say, the scripts are all down below. If you want to have a play, let me know what you think of it. The idea being that although it's got a very low air flow and it's just a simple paper filter, it does continually, 24-7, it's quiet enough, it's low enough power that it just continually, just in one room, it will just gradually just sift the air through this filter and potentially take out impurities in the air, dust and pollen and things like that. So uh, let me know what you think. Is this uh, going the right direction? I also chose an illuminated fan just because I thought it looked cool and it is quite nice at night. It's, it casts a slight glow in the room. This is so quiet, I've had it going for a few nights in my bedroom at night now. It doesn't keep me awake at all. So there we go. As I say, give it a go if you're interested in trying this out. Uh, let me know what you think. Do some experiments and tests if you want. and. Uh, and just tell me in the comments down below what you think of the project so far.